Hi, so you know how you sometimes run into a plugin that's really useful and then lo and behold, it's free as well. To me, that's really a plugin that you cannot afford to miss. And in the first episode of this new series, I'm going to talk about Isolate by TB Pro Audio. So let's go. So what is the Isolate plugin? Let's take a look at the website of TB Pro Audio. So Isolate is a mixed monitoring tool which divides the frequency range into five bands. And these five bands can be soloed or muted individually. And this helps you to concentrate on certain frequency ranges during mixing and mastering. And you can also use the plugin as a flexible multi-band splitter where you can do separate processing on the split frequency bands. Now, I haven't really used it as a splitter myself in Cubase. I mainly use it as a mixed monitoring tool, so let's have a look. Furthermore, these are all the features of the plugin. And the download is free and is available for these platforms in these formats. Now, you may notice there's a GPU and a no GPU download, which either uses your graphics card for drawing the user interface or your main processor. I'm running the GPU version here, but check the system requirements to see if your graphics card is okay for running the GPU version and otherwise run the no GPU version. Now, if you look at the plugin in Cubase, you can see that I have it inserted here in the control room in the main mix inserts. And the reason is that for this purpose, I use this plugin for monitoring only. So I don't want it to have impact on my exported track. So that's why it's in the control room. And in the control room, it's after my plugin that I use to run reference tracks, adapter metric AB, so that whatever I'm playing, either my main mix or a reference track, that's what Isolate is affecting. And I'm running it before any further analysis plugins, so that what I'm seeing in the analysis plugins is actually specific to the frequency band I'm focusing on with Isolate. So let's check out how this works and what it can do. And the audio that you're hearing is from Streambeats, which provides copyright free music for content creators. And the song is called What If. So on the top row of the plugin, you can see that there's a filter section and that basically determines which bands you want to monitor. So the first band is from zero to 200 and the second band is from 200 to 700, etc., And the high band is from 8,000 and up. Now you can change that however you want, but I find that these default bands work quite well for me. Now next up you have mute buttons to mute a certain band and solo buttons to solo a certain band. Now, in order for you to be able to hear what I'm doing with this plugin, I also inserted another version on my mix bus because that's the audio that gets recorded to the video and not my control room, which has, for example, my Sonoworks plugins for speaker compensation. And that's not typically the audio that I want to record to the video. So when you see me operate the plugin, it's the one on the mix bus, but that's not the way I use it in real life. In real life, I use the instance which I have inserted in my control room. Now there's also a way to push a button and then automatically disabling all buttons and that's by using shift clicking with your mouse. So let's use that for individually soloing the bands. Yeah, so that's a very nice and quick way to zoom in on certain frequencies. Large big knobs, quite clear. If you have muted certain bands, for example these two, then there's also a button to quickly bypass both without turning them off. Should I be scared? The feeling's so different now. There's a menu here on the left side by which you can open the manual, see the change log of the plugin, check for updates, let it check for updates automatically, show tooltips various controls for setting the scaling of the UI. You can also enable certain keyboard controls so that you can mute and unmute the buttons via your keyboard. And whatever you set can be saved to defaults over here. There's also a separate button here to check for updates. Now on the left bottom side, you have the channel monitoring section. For example, with the channel mode, you can determine which channels the frequency bands and buttons are working on. For example, on the whole stereo channel or maybe just on the left or right channel maybe just on the mids or sides, or you can even set it to multi-channel. And then you can use these channel settings below here to say which channels of your multi-channel audio track this frequency range gets routed to. Now, like I said, I'm not really using this plugin this way myself, but this would be the way to use it as a splitter, but you do have to insert it on a multi-channel audio track in that case. But let's just set it back to stereo. You can also set the slope of the crossover filters. You can also quickly monitor just one channel. For example, just listen to the left, right, mid or side. Let me show you. Should I be scared? The feeling's so different now. It got 
You can also swap the left and right channel to see how that sounds. There's an output control if you want to boost the level of what you're listening to. And there's a dim control which turns down the audio by the amount you can specify over here. And as you can hear, the dim is not instantaneous, it sort of gradually fades in and fades out. Now there's also a sidechain on this plugin, and a way to monitor the sidechain. I'm not exactly sure how you would use that, maybe if you want to input an entirely different signal via the sidechain input in Cubase. I guess you could do it, maybe a reference track via the sidechain or something. And then switch between your normal track and the reference track via the sidechain. But if you found some creative uses for it, please let me know in the comments. Now if by now you like this video or find it useful, please give it a big thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. We really want to spread this to more people so they can enjoy this free plugin. And you can also subscribe to the channel and ring the little bell icon if you want to get notified when I post another video. I also have lots of affiliate links in the description to these stores. So if you're planning on buying anything related to music or not music related even, if you do so after clicking one of those affiliate links, I will get a small commission on whatever you buy in those stores without any additional cost to you. Now, how do I typically use this plugin? Well, like I showed you, I use it in my control room inserts so that it works on whatever I'm sending to the control room. And the main use case is of course, listening to a certain frequency band by using the solo button so that you can really focus in on, for example, how does my low end sound compare to my reference track or how do my mid sound compare to my reference track or my high end. If you, for example, solo the high end and switch between your main mix and your reference track. You can really pick up quite a lot from listening to it in that way. Now another way that I sometimes use it is to simulate speakers with a limited frequency range. I do have the Aventone mix tubes on my desk here as well for that purpose, but by using the low and high mutes on this plugin I get a very similar sound. So this is the full frequency range. And what if I but if I now mute the low and high frequencies, I hear something which is very similar to what my Aventone monitors produce over here. Now the dim button I use to quickly, well, dim the sound level. For example, when you want to say something to the artist sitting next to you in the control room, or you get a phone call, or whatever the reason is for dimming the sound level. I do have a dim button on my monitor controller as well, by the way, but it's just a little bit more out of reach. And the nice thing about this dim button is that I can easily determine the level of the dim as well. And that's another way that I sometimes use it is if I want to listen to a really low mix level. Colt Caprun recently had a video about mixing at very low levels and how useful that is. And you can really use this plugin for that as well. I will link to that video in the description. Now, if you knew this plugin already and have some creative uses for it, please let me know in the comments. Or if you like this series on free plugins and have some suggestions on which free plugins I should feature, please let me know in the comments as well. And if you have nothing to add, well, you can always drop some emoji in the comments, which will help with engagement on YouTube. If you like free stuff for using Cubase or any of the other DAWs, then you may also like this video on the Steinberg Lo-Fi Piano. Check it out, enjoy, and see you soon.